Everyone recalls Blockbuster, not the one that's been turned into a joke, but the one from long ago, the video store you used to regularly rent videos from. Remember walking through the doors and heading over to the new releases around the outer walls, recognizing some of them from the week before and getting excited when you saw something new. Moving methodically through the store, taking in each movie until you get to the other end. Picking up a movie you're sure you're going to rent, and one that you may put back if you see something better. Taking a minute to make sure you're happy with your selections because it was a big decision back then. There was no turning off the movie and looking for another after starting it to see what it is. Those were your movies for the weekend. Before going to the checkout counter, you will typically have a brief glance through the aisles containing the previous releases. Maybe you would pick up some popcorn or candy on your way and then checking out and paying $20 for a handful of movies and some red vines. Even though everything wasn't perfect, I'm willing to bet that the majority of us have fond memories of the store. It was the best way to get movies at the time. Yes, you could go to the store and pay an outrageous amount for them. You could wait until something came on TV or pay for the movie channels and increase your chances of something good coming on. And there were other competing video rental stores like Hollywood Video and Family Video, but they just didn't compare. Personally, I never felt quite the same as I did at a Blockbuster when I visited any of those other stores. Like they were just cheap imitations. There's no doubt about it. The place to rent movies was at Blockbuster. The company started in 1985. Not that long ago, the majority of individuals didn't even own a VCR. The business grew quickly, and by the 1990s, Blockbuster was literally the industry standard for renting videos. I think it was a good business idea. Purchase many VHS and rent them out to two people till the cost is recovered, and then simply sell it after you finish renting it out. They would buy them in bulk and have the benefits of some substantial discounts as well. And they would arrange revenue sharing agreements with the studios if the costs did get too high. There's definitely opportunity to make a profit. Not to mention they did the exact same thing with video games and the rentals weren't their only source of revenue. I have some figures to support my points because I just randomly selected these 2003 numbers. Roughly 77% of their income came from rentals, 22% came from merchandise, and the remaining percent came from other. What is merchandise and what is other? Merchandise is the movie and game sales, not rentals, but sales, which is about 70% of it. And the other 30% is general merchandise, meaning the popcorn or the milk duds or anything else they sell in the store. And what's the other portion of revenue? I'm not sure, but as usual, there always seems to be a mysterious other category, but it's a small percentage. Given the times then, it was a solid business plan. It was, in reality, an excellent business plan. So when did the transition happen? When did they become nothing more than a late night punchline and cease to be that cherished video store? Based on the revenue and number of stores, it seems that they peaked around 2004 to 2005 and everything went downhill from there. It's difficult to pinpoint the exact time of the shift. I'm going to say it was somewhere in the middle of that decade when it began, but wasn't fully completed until the end of it. So here's the big question. What happened to Blockbuster? Everyone is probably thinking that Netflix happened at this point, and I'm sure it's going to be all over the comment section. But that is not my conclusion at the end of the video. Not exactly. However, Netflix managed to endure when Blockbuster failed. So what we should investigate is what separates the two companies. And I'm talking about the classic Netflix, not the streaming content, but sending DVDs to your house because that was Netflix's business model during this time. It was not until about 17 years ago that they began streaming. As far as I see it, there were two big differences. First, what I just mentioned. While with Blockbuster, you had to travel to the movies. With Netflix, the movies came to you. So with Netflix, it's easier for the customer, but it's also more confining. Blockbuster allows you to rent movies whenever you want, without having to wait for the mail, giving you more freedom. It really comes down to personal taste when it comes to this aspect. However, another significant distinction is that Netflix requires a subscription, whereas Blockbuster charges a fee for each movie. Here's where Netflix has an advantage. You can rent anything you want for the entire month for the same price you would pay on your weekly trip to Blockbuster. So the logical thing for Blockbuster to do to compete would be to offer subscriptions for unlimited rentals at their stores. But it's not as simple as it sounds. In fact, none of this is as simple as it sounds. People nowadays appear to view Blockbuster as a bunch of jerks who were blind to the way the video rental industry was evolving. The public seems to have this perception that Blockbuster thought in-store rentals was the only way to do business and just laugh at the idea of mail and streaming services. That is untrue. You may have heard this one before. In the year 2000, Blockbuster declined a deal to purchase Netflix for $50 million, a company that is worth billions today. However, Blockbuster felt they could defeat them at that moment, so they chose to compete with them. 
It wasn't that they were ignoring the business model that Netflix established. It's just that they didn't think it was the correct time to buy the company. It was perhaps the worst choice they have ever made looking back, but how are they to know it at the time? Like most people, I would have respected their decision to decline the deal without question. In fact, they signed a 20-year contract at that same time to broadcast video on demand using fiber optic technology, which was significantly more expensive than buying Netflix. The only problem is that the deal was with Enron, and the technology didn't work, and Enron went bankrupt soon after, and nothing came of it. This agreement may have given Blockbuster a competitive advantage over Netflix. Here's more proof that Blockbuster had some knowledge of the mail and streaming space. In a company's annual reports filed with the SEC, they include a section that identifies possible threats to the company in almost every year that Netflix existed, they were listed as a possible threat, as well as video on-demand services. Furthermore, they discussed their attempts to get into the market by collaborating with DirecTV in the 2001 report. Therefore, do not assume that Blockbuster was simply ignoring everything. They were well aware of it and making efforts early on. Let's return to the reason why providing subscription services like Netflix was difficult. Those rental revenue numbers that I showed you earlier include something called late fees, something that's impossible to collect if the customer has an unlimited rental subscription. Because late fees were bringing in a healthy profit, they were unwilling to alter their business model in a way that would totally do away with them. However, in 2004, they introduced Blockbuster Movie Pass, a subscription service, and the following year, they declared that late fees would no longer apply. But the thing is that if you're still renting out movies the traditional way, late fees are sort of necessary. They had to get the movies back on schedule, and the late fees encouraged the client to do so. Their system was a little sketchy where it gave the customer a grace period, and after enough time they just said you owned it, and charged the full price of the movie. In the end, they developed Blockbuster Total Access, another online subscription service that let users check out many movies at once in an attempt to get into every market. They could be exchanged at any blockbuster shop or sent over the mail like Netflix. It gained a lot of subscribers initially but quickly went down. It was more costly than Netflix, and I presume the consumers didn't think the convenience of exchanging the DVDs in store justified the additional cost. They even attempted to use Blockbuster Express, a DVD rental kiosk similar to Redbox that was ultimately taken over by Redbox. In 2010, Blockbuster went bankrupt. Dish Network bought the company soon after, but haven't been able to do much with it. They've tried similar things, integrating it into their satellite service, but it seems they'd basically given up. These days, Blockbuster.com is largely empty. I believe Blockbuster is done. Making that name relevant again would require some extremely intelligent brains, and I'm not sure it would be worth it. In my opinion, the concept of renting movies from a store and taking them home is no longer relevant. It was becoming obsolete with the DVD mail rentals, and the streaming has finished the job. The fact is that the service Blockbuster provided became useless, and the only way they would have been able to survive is changing everything. And you're probably not surprised by the fact that restructuring an entire business is difficult to do. They needed to break into that video on demand and video by mail industry. And as we saw, they gave it a try. They didn't go right in. They experimented with Enron, DirecTV, and finally began offering their own services. The fact that they kept opening new stores is evidence of this. They were just experimenting with other services and seeing what would catch on and be profitable. They said it was the way of the future, but it appears that they were underestimating the speed at which the future came. They didn't feel the urgency to do it early on, and once they did, it was too late but they're not exactly jerks for going about it this way. If I had asked you 15 years ago if you thought video rental stores would be utterly useless in five years, you would have probably answered that you didn't think so, and that was Blockbuster's answer. But let's remember exactly what Blockbuster provided. Netflix provides movies, but Blockbuster also provided an experience. That entire encounter that I previously detailed, you cannot obtain that from Redbox or Netflix. I think of it as being like a movie theater. You are paying for more than just the movie when you spend the $10 on a ticket. You're paying for the whole experience and similar to Blockbuster, if new movies were legally able to be streamed right to people's homes, the theaters would probably become irrelevant as well. Blockbuster is a victim of their surroundings changing. Had they been able to predict the future, they most likely could have begun reorganizing their business strategy in time to gain an advantage against Netflix. But I don't blame them for not knowing what lies ahead. In the early 2000s, they were in a time where they needed to make changes fast, but they weren't aware of it. The truth is, not many companies would have been. Maybe it was time for Blockbuster to go. It's hard to admit, but sometimes some businesses just aren't meant to last forever. 
It bothers me to think of them as the joke that they have turned into. I prefer to remember the positive experiences. What I'm trying to say is to remember shock on the Lakers, not on the Celtics. Yes, there was a major downturn at the end, but there was also a period in the early 2000s when no one was better. I know there's hundreds of videos on YouTube already that use Shaq as a metaphor for Blockbuster, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Let me know in the comments any thoughts you have on Blockbuster, whether it be about its peak, the decline, or anything else. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching and for the support.